Hi, it's John from Android Alex, and today we're doing an FPS benchmark for Call of Duty running on the Exynos 2100 versus the Snapdragon 888. So here I have got power saving mode turned on on the Exynos 2100 to see if that helps. Currently there is a bug where power saving mode actually improves performance, so we'll see how we get on here. The graphics quality setting is low with a max frame rate on both. So what we're hoping and expecting for both phones is a pretty much solid 60 FPS throughout the whole game. Again, you can monitor the temperature of the phones. If you look to the right of the application icon there, we can see the Exynos currently running at 26 degrees and the Snapdragon at 32. So just because the Snapdragon is at 32 doesn't mean it's running hotter whilst playing Call of Duty particularly, it just means that I was using the phone beforehand which means it's already warmed up, basically. Predator missile on standby. Predator missile awaiting orders. Dog is inside. Enemy contact. Reloading. Cover me. Tango down. We can see here that the Exynos CPU load is slightly higher on average compared to the Snapdragon. That seems to be the case in all the tests I've done so far. Snapdragon is still at 32 degrees, but the Exynos is slowly catching up. It's just popped up to 27. Trying to do some no-scoping there on the Exynos, which uh, didn't work too well. So far, both phones are doing really well, both holding on to that 60 FPS with just the odd drop every now and again. Obviously my sniping skills aren't increased even whilst using the Snapdragon. Average CPU is actually dropping down on the Snapdragon there, while staying around 11% for the Exynos. COD Mobile is definitely very well optimised for Android. It's certainly one of the better games. I mean, it looks looks good and it runs really smoothly. That Hunter Killer drone was a slightly unnecessary, but uh, amusing nonetheless. See the Exynos is catching up now, it's up at 29 degrees. Snapdragon hasn't budged from 32 at the start. The AI would do some really annoying 
left and right movements when you're trying to snipe, as you can see. Okay, so if we have a look at the frame rate charts here, we can see that both phones between the one minute and five minute mark of the game, both pretty much flat lines there on the 60 FPS. You can see there are a couple more drops on the Exynos compared to the Snapdragon, but overall it's uh, they both perform really well there. So if we have a look at the CPU usage chart here, we can see that there's pretty much no difference between them. A bit of a spike there on the Snapdragon at the bottom, but that could have been something happening in the background on the phone itself. Overall, both very, very similar results. I'd say it's slightly smoother on the Snapdragon, but overall the CPUs weren't really doing too much during that game. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the very high graphic quality and very high frame rate on both phones now. That is the max that the Snapdragon can do currently. You can see all the other settings there. Just get into another practice game. Okay, and we are expecting and hoping for another 60 FPS on both phones again. Like I say, COD Mobile is really well optimized for Android phones. And for these two brand new you know, chipsets, it shouldn't really uh, pose a problem. The average CPU has gone up a bit as you can see, so we're now up at 14 compared to 11 with the low settings on the Exynos, and we've gone up from about 8 to 11 on the Snapdragon. Frame rate wise, they're still pretty much locked at 60 here. Just the odd dropped frame from both. It does seem to be more frequent on the Exynos, but uh, again, as I said previously, it's not really something you'd notice during gameplay. Lovely flat line of 60 there on the Exynos, although I've just jinxed it. But it's uh, nice to see that it can handle 60 FPS as long as the games are optimised enough. Obviously for Snapdragon phones, it's something that uh, you're probably used to. Here in Europe though, sadly we have been equipped with the Exynos over the last few years and it hasn't been great. 
in comparison to the 2100, which is actually doing really well. Exos has heated up to 30 degrees now, so it started at 27. The Snapdragon started at 31 in this test, and it's only got up to 32, so it's not doing too bad. Okay, so looking at the frame rate charts, we can see here that both phones performed really well. The Exynos at the top there, again, just a couple of drop frames every now and again. And Snapdragon, it looks like it faltered a tiny bit more at the 1 minute 45 mark, but really it was just flatlined throughout the whole thing. Hopefully I don't have to point this out, but the drop offs at the end there is when the game is finished and it's gone back into the main menu, which runs at 30 FPS. So ignore those bits at the end. If we have a look at the CPU usage chart now, there's near enough no difference between the two. Very, very similar results there. Okay, so last up, we're gonna try very high and max frame rate for the Exynos. Like I said, this isn't currently selectable on the, on the Snapdragon variant. So I thought I'd give it a try on the Exynos, see how we get on. So it's nice to see it isn't locked at 40 like PUBG is. So we're hoping still for another 60 FPS flatline if possible. And we're starting off at 32 degrees here, so we'll see if it increases much more throughout this uh, last session. The CPU average is going up a bit, you can see, which is obviously to be expected as we are completely maxed out now. Very solid 60 FPS still at the moment. Sniper! Cover me. Target down. The AI on this game isn't the best, as you can see. You see the AI doing that annoying left-right movement there, so I gave up and uh, decided to go and stab him instead. Headshot! Down. 
So the CPU average load has dropped down a bit. Temperature is staying the same, so this isn't really maxing out the CPU itself, or the GPU for that matter. We have popped up to 33 degrees now, but it's still well within a comfortable temperature. Okay, so let's have a look at the frame rate and CPU usage chart here. So again, a pretty much solid 60 FPS there for the Exynos. CPU wise, only a couple of percent more than in the other modes. So basically you might as well just run it on the maximum settings possible on the Exynos 2100 because it isn't really breaking a sweat. Now I'm pretty sure that the Snapdragon would be exactly the same, if not better. But like I said, for some reason at the, at the moment, you cannot set that within the game. I'm sure an update will be coming out soon which will allow you to do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please click on the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos coming in the future. I have got some more gaming tests coming out so if there's any other games you want me to try out let me know. I'm certainly up for doing some emulator tests as well so if you can think of some good emulators you want me to try out let me know again down below in the comments and I will add them to the list. I think this is fair to say that this is a draw for both phones, neither one or the other really performed better. They were both pretty much locked at 60 throughout the whole thing. If you did have to single one out, you could say that the Exynos dropped a couple more frames than the Snapdragon did. But as I said, it's not really something you'd actually notice whilst playing the game. If you want to become a member of the channel, please click on the join button. That really helps out. And again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.